Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to IBMS BetNet for our session on America Serves. My name is Lindsay Hodkinson, and I am the program manager for the community of practice for the Institute for Veterans and Military Families at Syracuse University. Um, I've been here at the university for just over three years now. Um, prior to coming here, I worked for the Department of the Army um, in an infantry brigade, working with the families and soldiers and advising the commander on um, family-related issues and readiness um, and high-risk behavior across the brigade. Um, happy to be here at the university um, and glad that everybody is here as well. I'd like to also introduce um, my colleague, Lisa Murray. Um, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lisa Murray. Um, I'm also a program manager with the Institute for Veterans and Military Families, a part of the America Serves team. Uh, I've been on the team for about five years now. I'm an Army veteran, and I work closely with communities around the country to build our America Serves networks and create relationships and, and stronger collaboration for our veteran service members and their families. All right, it is my pleasure to introduce today's special guest, Colonel Retired Mike Cloy. Colonel Retired Mike Cloy served our nation for 27 years as a regular Army commissioned infantry officer, leading and commanding soldiers at the tactical, operational, and strategic levels in both peace and in combat operations. He has practiced the art and science of leadership in complex and uncertain environments and was recognized for his leadership by the awarding of three legions of merit, two bronze stars, and the combat infantry badge. He is a graduate of the Army's premier leadership schools, which are the U.S. Army Ranger and Special Forces schools. After retiring from the Army, Mike taught leadership in both the public and private school settings for six years before becoming a disabled veterans outreach employment consultant for the North Carolina Department of Commerce. Mike's work as an NC Works Distinction employee was recognized as he was awarded the 2017 Governor's NC Works Award of Distinction for Outstanding Achievement in Workforce Development. Mike is currently the Assistant Director of Housing and Employment for Veterans Services of the Carolinas, which is a division of Asheville Buncombe Community Christian Ministries. Mike is a lifelong learner as he has earned four graduate degrees in areas of counseling, education, strategic planning, and human services. Yeah. Brandon Wilson is currently the managing director for the Veterans of the Carolinas with the Ashcombe, Asheville Buncombe Community Christian Ministry. He also serves as the network director for the NC Serves Western. His duties include oversight of the Supportive Services for Veterans and Families, SSVF, Homeless Veteran Reintegration Programs, and Projects for Assistance in the Transition for Homelessness Program. Prior to these roles, Mr. Wilson worked in the mental health field with VIA Health in Asheville, North Carolina. Previous to this position, Brandon held many positions within the North Carolina Department for Military and Veteran Affairs to include Regional Service Officer, State Training Coordinator, and Deputy Director for Veterans Affairs. Brandon is a Combat Marine and Veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Our last guest, Heath Smith. Heath is currently the Director of Veteran Services for Buncombe County, NC. Previous to his employment with Buncombe County, he spent eight years in the private sector as the Vice President of Bus Business Development for Sterling Commercial Credit and Vero Business Capital. Heath graduated cum laude from Christian Brothers University, where he was a member of the soccer team. Heath led a Marine Corps infantry team during the initial push into Iraq in 2003. He earned a Combat Action Ribbon, Presidential Unit Citation, and an Iraq Campaign Medal with two bronze campaign stars for his service in Iraq. Uh, I will be moderating this session with Lisa Murray, as we kind of talked about before, and we will also have some assistance from Ashley Squires with the IBMS Alumni Services team, um, who will be moderating, monitoring the YouTube chat channel throughout this course of the session and introduce any questions that may come through to our guests. Mike, Brandon, and Heath, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Um, and just to give everybody a little bit of information on what America Serves is, so 
Um, currently, right now, America Serves is operating in um, 17 networks and soon to add an additional network in um, the Rio Grande Valley in Texas. And we work with um, coordination centers in our local communities that help uh, coordinate services for veterans and their families um, across a range of 20 plus categories, anywhere from homelessness, um, employment needs, um, health referrals, um, legal services, transportation services, but also um, into a number of um, social enrichment um, and getting involved in the community and volunteering. Um, so that is basically what America Serves is in a nutshell. Um, you know, we're operating in these 17 communities right now and um, working together to kind of help uh, better service delivery to veterans and their families. Yeah, and just to add to that in terms of uh, our work in, in these communities, um, and all our, our special guests are actually doing this work as well, um, each network has a, a backbone organization that serves as the coordination center. So this really helps to create a a uh, air traffic controlman in the community that is routing and receiving referrals from organizations that have been operating um, you know from a few years all the way up to 50 75 years these are all organizations that many of you um, have probably heard of the VA for one um, USO uh, all different kinds of organizations come into the fold and offer services but our coordination centers are really at the the heart of these communities um, learning Learning what each of those organizations do so that you can be um, sent to the to the right provider the first time all right um, so now we'll give each of our, our guests uh, just a few minutes to run through a more in-depth introduction of themselves um, Mike Cloy hi uh, thanks for uh, hosting this and having me as part of it, inviting me to be part of this. It's, uh, it's indeed a joy to see the, the work of, um, and be part of the work of America Serves. Um, probably the, the thing I would like all of us to know is that I grew up as a military kid. Um, my dad was in the Army 33 years, and that's basically all I have ever known. After college, I also went in, served, as you know, 27 years. My brother was in service for 25, my son, six, my son-in-law, my father-in-law. And so I've been immersed in that culture. It, um, and it, uh, it's interesting to look back now, having been out 10 years, almost 11, how difficult it was um, to step into a messy world, <laughs> as I call it, very messy. Um, and if I had known uh, the existence of NC Serves, I probably would have, or America Serves, in this case, I work with NC Serves uh, as a sub, uh, one of those networks. I would probably jump right on it because it um, would allow me to focus on the right things. Um, it allowed me to transition into a world that uh, was very confusing to me. And it's something that I really wanted to do um, when I got out was to get away from the military. Uh, so I didn't land near any military installation. Uh, I was out in the middle of Charlotte, um, Fayetteville, Fort Bragg was probably the closest, actually Fort Jackson. But I did that deliberately so that I could become as best as I could a, a member of the civilian community. But again, it was messy. Um, so I've experienced some of the of what many have gone through. Uh, that use the platform that uh, and it's given me an appreciation uh, my background's given me an appreciation of what y'all do um, uh, to help focus our families our military families or veterans anyone that touches them so that's based that's probably the biggest thing I would like to share with y'all is it I'm, I've been there I'm, I'm in the midst of what you do uh, personally uh, and I lean on it even for myself, um, just the collaboration and the comfort knowing that I've got someone I can talk to that relates to where I've been, how I grew up. That's all I've got. I just wanted to share that little tidbit. Thank you, Mike. Brandon, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we'll move to you next. 
All right, can you hear me? Good to go. So, uh, yeah, I just want to really talk about the what Mike said a while ago about collaboration. I think that's what makes this network uh, really stand out more than anything. As a veteran myself and some of the roles I've held in the past, uh, my roles now as an administrator, but to see our team be able to collaborate with the many different providers that are out there from federal agencies to state agencies, county agencies, to nonprofits, to churches, being able for all of them to collaborate together and work with each other and lean on each other's strengths uh, and not really to fo to focus too much on their weaknesses, but focus on what each organization does really, really well and be able to talk to each other and communicate with each other to help that one person. Um, that to me is just remarkable in this day and time and to be able to, to see that breadcrumb trail, to be able to see the outcomes of each one of those things. One of the things that I think is really the most beneficial thing that we do uh, with our with the America Serves Network is it's not just for veterans. I think that our ability to know that veterans come back and they they sometimes have uh, they struggle with transition uh, or veterans that have been back since Korea or Vietnam. I think being able to assist their family members, their caregivers, their children. I think by harnessing our community providers better we're better able to support our veterans that are in the community by being able to do that instead of just treating them independently. Uh, a lot of VA programs primarily just treat the veteran. And uh, I always say this all the time that the, the VA system, and, and I, I love the VA system, but they only help you with your needs. And I think that the community uh, or their benefits, uh, VA helps you with your benefits and the community actually can help you with your needs. And I think what America Service serves as built is our ability to harness all that community in, in parallel and going in the same direction to help not just that one individual, but their family as well. So I'll let Heath go. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me. Um, I guess is is the only person here that's referring folks into it or being sort of similar to an outsider. Hopefully, I can give some perspective on that. Um, anytime, as Mike was saying, I mean, there's tons of gaps. When when someone gets out of the military, they they kind of want to be done with the military, and so once they come in for services, there's gaps all over the place. And, and hopefully, I can speak to that in a little bit. In any way, we can fill in those gaps with collaborations um, with and with folks. Um, like NC serves, which is part of the bigger America serves. Anytime we can fill in those gaps for veterans or their dependents, I, I mean, it's a win for us all. Obviously, some of those gaps are the size of the Grand Canyon, but hopefully we can start filling those in and get veterans connected with resources that, that they need to, to live productive and successful lives post-military. Thank you all. And now we'll spend about the next 20 minutes or so allowing our guests uh, to talk a little bit about America Reserves and respond to a series of questions. So for those of you that are viewing this session via YouTube live broadcast, please feel free to utilize the chat channel off to the right of the viewing pane um, to type any questions that you might have for our guests. We'll make certain to leave time at the end to answer as many questions as possible. Um, so I guess our first question will be is why would someone utilize America Serves? Well, I, I'll speak towards it from a practitioner um, experience. Um, I, I mainly work daily with veterans in housing and um, in employment, um, but yet is Keith has stated there, there's a host of other things that have to be addressed, but I don't have the means to do that. Um, so the American Service platform allows me to uh, share in the case management or the intensive services that I provide uh, to allow me to focus on those things that I do well. I kind of equate it to, um, when you're in the military, you always have a sergeant that's in charge of you. Even as an officer, you have a first sergeant or a sergeant major that you're working with or answer to actually. You know, your first sergeant and your CEO, or your company commander sign your lead form. But you have a sergeant that shows you the way, the path, the the means to getting to a destination, um, to walk behind or either walk alongside. And, and th that is the 
that is the parallel um, experience that you have when you use uh, the American Search platform, the networks, uh, is that you get that uh, firsthand experience for someone who's been there, has gone before you, and um, you can learn from, um, be mentored, even formally or informally. So, yeah, they, it's that it's that air traffic control. It's that someone's helping you land where you need to land or to get to where you need to get. And uh, so it's been a it's been refreshing to me because I can do my job better with uh, partnering with uh, those that um, care care and coordinate the care of our our veterans and their families. Thank you, Mike. Our next question is, uh, what services do you provide in your areas? And uh, kind of a follow-up to that will be, uh, what other areas does America Service cover? Oh, I guess I'll go, uh, Lisa. Um, so at Veteran Service of the Carolinas, we primarily focus on the housing and employment piece uh, for our veterans, and that ranges from uh, crisis housing to permanent supportive housing and everything in between. Um, we also work with employment piece, so we really focus on uh, assisting our veterans and families with getting uh, a job, then get them into a better job, then get them in a career field, sort of like the ABCs of employment, and that's something that Mike's team does extremely well. Um, I really want to say, though, that uh, through NC Serves, through America Serves, we have become a force multiplier here where typically our strengths have been housing and employment and veteran services of the Carolinas. We have now been able to force multiply ourselves. And uh, as we team with 86 other providers and partners in the community, now we can almost say that we provide a vast array of services. Our partnerships and relationships that we forge with our providers has allowed us to do that. We have become more knowledgeable. Uh, from all the services and, that are out there in the community, uh, uh, from holistic approaches to mental health approaches to legal approaches uh, and different programs that the community has to offer. So not only have we become more knowledgeable in that, but we forge these relationships that has allowed the veterans who come in that maybe just come in just for housing or just come in just for employment, we're able to then ask them a couple more questions and get to maybe the root cause or the root need that they're looking for and then not only identify that, but more importantly, send them in the direction that we know the community or our provider is going to be able to take care of them. Um, as a veteran myself, coming back and saying, hey, how do I get my GI Bill? You know, maybe I would go to the VFW or the Marine Corps League, or maybe I would finally wander into a veteran service office like Heath's, and Heath could send me in that right direction. Or maybe it was I wandered into a community college. I think what we're able to do now is, is a direct way to send that person somewhere. A lot of the stuff that we see is, hey, I need help with utilities. I'm behind on rent. Uh, my GI Bill's late. I got laid off at work. I need help with one month's worth of rent. So historically speaking, you may go to three or four different charities and they may be out of money and they're telling you no, 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 no. So everywhere that I go is a no. One, nobody likes to be told that. Providers don't like to tell them that no. So the network has really allowed us to uh, send people in the right direction where they're always told yes and they're never told no. I say that in confidence that not every need we can meet, uh, but uh, I think that the the community has really done a really good job of coming together and we're able to do less of that and more of actually the assistance part. Can I piggyback a little on on what Brandon just said? So when a veteran comes into a veteran service office, what we do, we try to, for lack of a better way of putting it, bring them under an umbrella, a benefits umbrella. And folks like Brandon and NC Serves and, and America Serves, we can hopefully turn that umbrella into a canopy because there are those gaps I was speaking about. When a veteran comes in, some of those gaps are life altering, whether it be the need for immediate housing or, you know, clothes in the winter or, you know, food assistance for a veteran and his family. And anytime we can bring other folks into that fold, um, we've, we've got great people in Buncombe County and at the VA, um, but, but they have their shortcomings. I mean, we only have so many federal, county, state dollars to go around. So anytime we can take that, um, 
umbrella and turn it into a canopy. I th- like I said, and, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I think it's a win for the veteran. Absolutely right. Thank you, Heath. Um, I'll take on that second part in terms of uh, what geograph- geographical locations are uh, covered by America Serves. Um, I usually like to have a, a map, and we actually have one on our americaserves.org website if you want to see all the different locations and you can uh, cruise around and drill down into each network. Uh, today we, we have our NC Serves Western uh, network represented here, but we have networks all over the country. Uh, we have two networks in New York, one in the upstate area and another in New York City, uh, Rhode Island, DC, uh, four in North Carolina total to include our NC Serves Western uh, partners here. We have one network in South Carolina, uh, two networks in, in Texas, and soon to be a third. Uh, we have one in Washington State, one in Pennsylvania, and am I missing it? And then if no, it's everyone. Is that everyone? Okay. <laughs> Doing that from. Uh, yeah. So. But as I said, you can go on americaserves.org if you'd uh, like to look and see all the different locations we have. If I could yeah, speak towards that a little bit, I'm going to give a real-world example that happened yesterday, how nested these networks are with each other. My um, daughter-in-law lives in Bluffton, South Carolina, just south, I think, of Paris Island, in Beaufort area. Um, and she's been following a person, a mother, wife of a disabled veteran, a four-year-old with um, cerebral palsy and a newborn that's in the NICU unit that's about to be discharged. Their landlord is about to evict them, not evict them, but not renew their lease. And so she's in a little bit of a quandary and she's reached out through Facebook for anybody that could help her find a place. My daughter-in-law sent it to me. I sent it to NC Service Western, the Care Coordination Center, and said, can you connect? First of all, validate the need. Uh, because my daughter-in-law was wondering if this was legit um, or someone was trying to run a scam. Um, And to come to find out after the Care Coordination Center from uh, NC Service Western contacted the veteran, the spouse of the veteran, um, everything was validated and they were able to hand off a referral to to NC Service, Aggression South Carolina Serves. Um, The the relief my daughter-in-law had, again, she was a military spouse at one time, so she, she relates to this, this mother, this wife, um, that she received. She was overjoyed. She was almost in tears because she's a mother, um, and she knew that that person was in the hands of the veteran community uh, that was going to take care of her. So it's not just these individual networks. It's the fact that they can seamlessly work together. I think that's critical to understanding the value of America serves. And I think it's important, and thank you, thank you for sharing that, Mike. And I think it's important to note that even if a veteran reaches out and may not necessarily be in one of our areas that we have a um, America serves location, um, for instance, in our uh, transparency report, we've, we've published um, three now. Um, ours from 2018 actually talks about a veteran that came into our network that was living in Florida, mm-hmm. where we actually don't have um, an America Service network, but reached out to one of our national partners, um, a provider from Team Red, White, and Blue, who was familiar with the America Service network. Um, And this veteran happened to be moving from Florida to Pennsylvania um, into the Pittsburgh area where we do have a network and was able to get him the services that he needed to make his transition out of school in Florida to a longer term, um, you know, whole move all the way to Pittsburgh um, very seamlessly and get him everything that he needs. And we've been able to replicate the interconnectedness Mm -hmm. of um, all of our markets and communities together across the country, which has been um, pretty amazing to see that work. Yeah. yeah. And even though we might not have a a network, we always are continuing to work on our relationships. And those are not always just local. We have Mm -hmm. national level uh, providers that are become part of our networks. So they literally cover the whole country and we know we can rely upon them if someone is in an area that is not covered by America Serves. But we always try to give someone a soft landing or a connection to at least get them started if, there, if, if there's no service, 
if there's no America service in their area. Yeah, and I just like to add, I think that's a, it becomes, you've got support in a way that you may not have. So let's say that you live in Nebraska, where we don't have a market right now, and you're getting out of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, but you're going to Nebraska, and you're looking for these resources there. You and your spouse, your children can Google all day long. I think that even if you come into one of our networks and say, hey, I'm leaving North Carolina, I'm going to Nebraska, I know you don't have a market there. I know our approach here at NC Serves is let us help you do that Googling. Let us help you make those phone calls. I think that sometimes we say we don't want to see a duplication of efforts, but I think when you're looking for resources in a place you, you, you're not familiar with, I think a duplication of effort is necessary to, to just cast out that net to assist those individuals. So I know that's the approach that we take here uh, with our NC Serves markets is we're going to try to do everything we can to help you even if we don't know those answers. And it, it allows you to do more and have more people on your team fighting for you and looking for you. Thanks, Brandon. Um, so the next question is who is eligible for America Serves and how would they submit a request? Um, so I can I can take that quick and Brandon feel free to, to jump in as you know you at the coordination center field a lot of these requests is that um, any service member or family member from any time of service is eligible to um, be part of the America Service Network as a client. Our coordination centers like Brandon's team in, in Asheville, North Carolina, will screen the eligibility of the where they're sending the referral, whatever provider they're sending it to, to make sure that that veteran or family member meets the eligibility criteria of that um, service provider and make sure that they're matching the, the veteran or family member with the right provider to make sure that they can um, meet that need. And then how they would submit that request is there's a couple of different options. They can fill out a request form um, on the America Serves website, americaserves.org, um, going to their community and filling out that self-request or self-referral. Um, they can call the 1-800 number, which is also available on that website, um, to contact the coordination center directly. Or they can go into a provider that is already on the America Serves network and they can put them into the um, network as well. <laughs> And on the americaserves.org website, there is a list of providers for each one of our networks. So if you're in an America Serves network, you can see all the different service, service organizations that are participating and then go right to uh, that location and they can get you connected. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add to that who's eligible for it. If, if you are a veteran who served one day of active duty service or you're a reservist or a guardsman, if you're a veteran who may have an other than honorable discharge, the America Serves, well, we will help you. You may not be eligible for specific veteran programs, but all the providers that we have may not be veteran specific. So we also partner with other mental health agencies, other providers, other churches, other the, the vast array of that we have. So if you've got an other than honorable discharge, don't let that be a barrier. If you're a spouse of a veteran, a caregiver of a veteran, uh, a dependent child of a veteran, we still want to be able to help you. If you're currently actively serving in the military and you're looking for some assistance for you or your family member, that is another eligibility that we will take. So uh, if you're not quite sure, go ahead and reach out to us. We're going to do what we can. Uh, it may not be exactly a VA benefit. It may be a, a local nonprofit benefit that we link you to, but I just wanted to make sure we clarify that it's not just for veterans, it's also for service members, family members. And I'd like to speak to that too. That's a big one for us because VA has a lot of bright line rules where it may, you know, sort of, there's some people that aren't going to qualify for sure services. And those folks we have definitely fit to NC service, and that's a great way to sort of have, you know, a catch all that way, you know, folks that may not be eligible for different monetary benefits, health care benefits, well, it makes that umbrella much bigger for them. Thank you, Heath, and thank you, Brandon. That was great add to the uh, question. So uh, our last scripted question is, how long until I would be connected to services? So that does vary depending on the service. 
but as we mentioned before, our, our coordination centers and our networks are working to get the right client with the right provider in the least amount of time. So they're continuously working on uh, what that would look like, and it, and it varies depending on the service. Uh, right now, the median average to uh, get a client to the provider is about uh, six days on average, but um, you know that's probably on the high end. Um, we, we see it happen just within a few hours for some of the referrals and others take a little bit longer due to uh, intake and information needed and getting back in touch with the client. Um, sometimes those things can take some time and um, you know we're looking at 21 different service categories. Yeah, and I'll just add add to that, you know, Heath's team does a, a remarkable job that as a veteran service office, we're able to veterans who come in and say, hey, I've never filed a claim or I need, you know, uh, I'm looking at a discharge upgrade. You know, we act, actually are able to send that to Heath Monday through Friday during working hours and they pick that up relatively quickly. So that's an example of how it could happen within a moment of, of a couple hours. You're getting a match to a referral, you're getting a phone call for an appointment and you're getting that that service is now going to be set up. And like Lisa said a while ago, some services are a little bit more difficult. If you've got a legal need with a bad conduct discharge and you're, you know, having difficulty with that and you're $6,000 behind in arrears, that may take a little bit more time. And that's sometimes what drives our averages of being able to match to a specific referral a little bit longer out. I do want to comment though, that one of the things that we also do is we also track what we can't do as a community. And that's what really drives our changes and impacts where we now set our next resource or funding toward. So just because we can't fulfill that need at the end of it, after we've tried everything that we can, we are tracking that unresolved need. And now we're sharing that with the community, with the commissioners, with state legislature to implement programs, implement funding for those true gaps and services that exist. And it's going to differ from community to community. And that's work we haven't been able to do before. So having that information is going to be able to make such a larger impact. Thank you, Brandon. All right. Yep. On to our yep. So we're going to move on to some of the questions that have come out of the chat room. So just as a reminder, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to uh, type those into the um, chat at the right hand side of the screen. Um, so our first question is, are your services free for vets? Take yeah, sure. I can take it. Okay. Yeah. So all of our services are free for vets. These are all nonprofit organizations that work in our communities already that receive grant funding to do the services that they offer. So there's no cost to the veteran in their family. All right. Question two, uh, do you have 24 seven online support for veterans or only walk-ins or appointment services. So, okay. go ahead, Brandon. So, um, we are not a crisis line in that in that nature. So, we are a business. We are Monday through Friday most of the time. However, our team and the approach that we have do get indicators throughout the weekend, and we try to at least respond back and say, "Hey, we're not in the office right now. We will get back to you first thing Monday morning." Uh, so we typically like to say 24 to 48 hours you will be responded to. Uh, it's a lot quicker than that during the week, but sometimes on weekends and holidays it may take a little bit of extra time. But I, 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 I would like to say for my team, we will, you will find something out within 24 and 48 hours, even if it's on a holiday or weekend. I do want to add to that point too is that the website is um, of course available 24 7 so at any time day or night you are able to log on to the website and fill out a request form for that assistance. Um, the next question is um, do you have access to VSO? Uh, I guess the I, I, I'm not answer that question with another question. When we think about VSOs, we often sometimes think about the services that Heath's office provides, which is veteran service officer. Uh, on a national level, VSOs are also called veteran service organizations. So to answer the question on a macro level, yes, we team with a lot of veteran service officers 
uh, our team uh, works with the veteran service officers in each county and the state closely. We also work with veteran service organizations, such as the Marine Corps League, the DAV, the VFW. So we do work with them as well. Thanks, Brandon. The next Thank question you. is, does America Serves cover veterans living abroad? Um, so currently, right now, we do not have any OCONUS um, America Serves locations, and, um, but what we can provide assistance is with um, our programs here at um, the IVMF, we can kind of, depending on what the need is, we can help look into um, what services might be available and kind of what the need is and, and work with a client that um, is looking for assistance overseas um, and be able to uh, refer them to the most appropriate assistance. Uh, the next question is, can America Serves provide help with the transition to a veteran-owned business? Um, so at any time a referral comes in, um, we do have a number of entrepreneurship um, programs um, here at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families. So mm -hmm. of, of course we will you know, work with our enrollment team here at the university to um, look and see if, if you are a right fit for one of our programs, but also um, there may be a provider in the America Serves Network that also can provide assistance for veteran-owned businesses. Um, but um, would encourage that individual to look at the IVMS website and um, see if they are a right fit for any of our programs that exist here at the university. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any plans to expand locations to other states? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we use a, a model, a collective impact model, so the conditions really need to be right for us to look to uh, create a network there, and, and the community really has to want this. It's about changing the, the way that services are being delivered and, and really enhancing um, and supporting our community providers to be able to serve their, their veterans and their families uh, in a more profound way. Um, so we're always looking to, to carry our mission forward and have communities uh, come on board and, and have a network. Uh, but we want to make sure that it's the right uh, place and with the right people in place to, to have that network stand up. And, and I'd like just to, to piggyback on that. With NC Serve Starter, we began our network with 12 counties. and we saw that we were getting some calls. Uh, we were getting a little bit of influx from some of these other counties that were out of line. And so we started going into those communities and America Serves completely supported us based on the need, based on the resources, based on some potential funding that we were able to identify to expand our network from 12 counties into 16 counties. So I think that Lisa's correct. I think if there's a need, that's what we wanna see. So if you're outside one of those areas, definitely start calling in, start inquiring about it, because that's the only way we can grow this and continue to, to scale this across the nation in the area. And just one final point on this, if, if you are in an area that you think would benefit from an America Serves community, I do encourage you to reach out um, to us here at the IVMF, um, and you know we can look to see if those conditions are right and set in that community, and look at the possibility. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think anything is ever off the table for us. Um, so I would just encourage you to reach out, and we can at least explore it. Um, the next question is: My spouse is active duty Army. We have moved around a lot over the last 15 years, and it's been difficult for me to keep employment. Um, do you help spouses find employment as well? well uh, I'm going to let Mike sort of answer a little bit of this because of his experience in the NC Works. Uh, Mike, can you sort of talk about what's available, what we do here in North Carolina, uh, as far as spouses are concerned? Thanks, um, Brandon. Um, well, from two perspectives, I, again, I was a disabled veteran outreach program specialist uh, and working in the, the state career center. Uh, so I have a little experience there. And indeed, um, the veterans outreach uh, specialist is unable to help spouses unless they're caregivers. Um, but they're, they're able to direct them within that career center to those um, case managers that provide that type of service. 
So a formal setting within the career center, who, center that we work with in many cases uh, exists. Uh, we also, through our grant, are able to informally speak towards that. So if we have a veteran who needs assistance and is in the area and their spouse calls us looking for work, we're able to indeed connect to a host of employers that we work with uh, to, to determine what their career assessments are, uh, where they want to go, if they want to change, those types of things. Uh, from uh, I've seen Brandon personally because he's he's well respected in the community. The networking that goes on, the informal networking that all of the case managers that are uh, employment specialists or just a care coordination person, they know a host of folks that are veteran friendly, uh, veteran employment friendly, um, and uh, are actually seeking spouses of veterans because they bring a um a level of discipline and commitment and a, an understanding of culture and things that no one else can bring so they, the answer is yes it may not be as formal as you uh would expect it to be but that's kind of a good thing because we can do it uh behind the curtain so to speak and uh speak to those that want to hire our, our spouse our military spouses I hope that helps. Thank you, Mike. No, it absolutely helps. And uh, we have providers all over the country and all of our networks. And uh, while their missions vary, uh, that's the work of the Coordination Center and the client together to, um, to determine what uh, provider is right for them that, that does serve uh, spouses and, and family members. Are there any other questions from the chat room? Okay, we'll give it just one more minute to see if there's any other questions. I just I just wanted to while we're on the call here, um, as the network director, being able to reach out, you know, Heath Smith is the director of veteran services at Buncombe County. And for him to take time out of his busy conference that he's at this week to be on this call, uh, first of all, Heath, thank you for that. But I think it's a testimony of, of how much he believes and supports of what we're doing. Because I'm sure he could be at lunch right now, eating and having having a good time. But he's took his hour to be on this call. So Heath, I really appreciate you and everything your office does. Because we couldn't do half of what we do without what you do, particularly in Buncombe County. So appreciate you. And we're all giving him a All right, it looks like you were starting to say something, Heath. I don't know if we're still having some connection problems or not. Oh, sorry about that. I was just going to say, respond to Brandon, as, as cliche as it sounds, on the ground level, it really is about helping that individual veteran and their dependent. And I know that sounds like, you know, made for TV, but it really is on the ground level all about that. Thank you for that. Really appreciate your additional insight. And thank you again for, for joining us today while you're at, um, at a conference. So uh, we are just about out of time for today. So Mike and Brandon and Heath, thank you so much for your time and excellent insight into America Serves and really the North Carolina Serves Network. So if anybody has any additional questions, please visit the americaserves.org website. Um, and for everyone viewing the live session, we'll post this webinar on the IBMS.net page for future viewing access. So in the event you know someone who might have missed this live session and would really benefit from seeing it, uh, please feel free to share that link with them. We will also be sending the recorded link to all those who RSVP'd as well as a survey to today's session. Please fill out our short survey. It will help to make sure we are providing uh, valuable content to you throughout our, our VetNet series. Our next VetNet series is Wednesday, April 24th with our IVMF research team. This session will focus on the VSTART data visual, visualization tool. VSTART stands for Veterans Strategic Analysis and Research Tool. 
These starts start can help uh, transitioning service members, veterans, and military families make more informed choices post-service. Our goal is to hold these sessions twice a month, so make sure you check back to learn about upcoming vet nets. Thank you so much to all of our guests and uh, all of you that joined today, and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you.